Okay. We have a 27 years old a young male with a severe head trauma. Dr. Rawa, Ismail. Sabah al khair. Yalla binti. Simati al history al yakin. Dora, we have the CT and MRI if you want. No. Repeat the history, Dr. Tabi. 27 years old, young male, presented with severe head trauma. So we have a case of head injury. Yes, yes, that's right. Doctor, you want more CT or shall we go to the MRI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the CT is more than the axial. Okay. Okay. Now, we have a multi-section CT scan of the brain. Uh, sure, there is an uh, foci of high signal of uh, uh, high density. Seen but suddenly fog after the or I'm here. After left high signal intensity, Edna, the subcortical white matter surrounded by hypodensity. More on the and here parasagittal, um, the frontal loop. More on the left side, with evidence of uh, pneumocephalus, and uh, there is a left, يعني كبرين, يمزلنا لي جوان posterior cause ده شو. Now, on the left side, left parietal, frontal parietal, apophid, subcutaneous collection, or hematoma. I think site of the trauma. Like the bone, ما داش شوف إنه هو apophid and fracture. بس أشوف إنزل لي بعد دكتور بلزح معليش. بس ما دكتورة رواء نعم حضرتك قلتي لنا على البرين هاي دنسيتي فوكاي ما قلتي هاي شنو؟ عمي هذه موستلي هيموراجيك هيموراجيك فوساي هاي دنسيتي والهايبو دنسيتي هذه قديمه صايره حولها موستلي بالفرونتال لوب باي لاترال مور اون ذا ليفت سايد زين والليفت فرونتو بارايتال سبكتينوس هذه كيف الهيماتوما غير؟ هيماتوما أوكي سادة الأمارة طلعتي
بلاير اي اكيد بس شوي اي يعني ابطا شويه اوكي عندي شيء بعد دكتورة أكو ديفيوجن أكو سوي سوي طلعي لي سوي ورا طلعي لي ديفيوجن دكتورة روى نعم استاذ ملتي سيكونس ملتي بلانر ام ار اي اي ديفيوجن شو ذير از ان التيرد سيجنال انتنسيتي ملتيبل فوسي ان ذا جراي وايت ماتر جانكشن سين مينلي اون ذا باي لاترال فرونتال لوب اي ثينك ان ذا رايت ثانامك ريجن اند رايت تيمبورال ريجن اند ات ذا سبلينيوم اوف ذا كوربس كلوزوم Would show the high T2 and flare signal intensity with blooming on the sui and restricted diffusion, mainly uh, see on the seplenium of the corpus callosum. And there is a an high uh, uh, signal intensity seen on the right temporal cortical temporal loop. Uh, also, uh, it is restricted on the dewey. يعني ويا عمل هيستوري وذا هيستوري اوف تروما يعني اخلي اول شيء ديفيوز اكزونال انجري وهذا يعني اتصور انه هو ذا ستيج 2 لانه انفولفمنت اولسو ذا كوربس كلوزم يعني الجراي وايت ماتر جانكشن والكوربس كلوزم اولسو انفولف سو ات از ستيج 2 ديفيوز اكزونال انجري اوكي شغلتين مهمه بالهيد انجري دكتوره رواء بس سالتي عليها التايب اوف تروم اوف هيد انجري يعني الميكانيزم تروما مهمه الميكانيزم هاي مهمه وال شو اسمه يعني تعرفين هذه تفرق بالهذه وذر كار اكسيدنت وذر يعني اكو ماني ميكانيزم كل وحده تنطيك فد فيتشرز محدده نعم دكتورة تبين نعم ميكانيزم هاي كان اكسلريشن اون روتيشنال فورس كان سيفير فورس اي شفتي الاكسلريشن ديسلريشن تسوي اللي حضرتك تفضلتي به دكتورة رواء هو الديفيوز اكزونال انجري فاحنا من نعرف الميكانيزم مالت هذه شو اسمه من حقا انت يو ار كلينيكال راديولوجيست مو يعني احنا مو فتاحين فال مجرد اكسترا فايندر او ايميجنج فايندر احنا لازم عندنا فد على الاقل البيزك هيستوري فالاكسلريشن ديسلريشن يسوي الديفيوج اكزونر مو صحيح؟ اي واحد شيء ثاني مهم تعرفي بالن الهيستوري شنو بعد شيء اخر انه وذر البيشنت كونشيوس يجلس في سكور مالته ايش قد مهم هذا مو صحيح؟ هذه هم المفروض تشيلين عليه اوكي دكتور رواء اكو هاي سيجنال انتنسيتي العفو عمي هم بالميد برين بس هو تز يعني راح يرفع عندنا الستيج وبعد انت من قلت ديفيوز اكزونال يعني ماني بس على مود الستيجنج راح يختلف اوكي شكرا دكتوره رواء العفو دكتوره فرحان صبيح ويانا نعم عمي صباح الخير صباح الخير شلون الشغل؟ شلون كامله؟ يور اوبينيون فاهم هو عمو مثل ما تفضل الدكتور هو مالتبل سكشن ام ار اي اوف ذا برين مالتبل فوساي كورتيكال سب كورتيكال فرونتال برايتال تمبرال هاي بالتي تو بالفتير اند بلومينج اون سوي عم هو الكونشسنس ليفل فيري امبورتنت يعني حتى نميز الديفيوز اكزونال عن عن برين كونتيوجن انه بالدفيوز اكزونال انجري راح يكون هيستوري اوف لوز اوف كونشسنس ليفل 
بينما بيل بيل براين كونفيوجن نو يعني ماكو لوس اوف كونشس في الوضع فهي يعني صفه تميز و يعني هي هاي المرتبة الفوساء يعني هو يمشي ويا الهيستوري مالت البيشنت هسه يعني ديسلريشن uh, انجري uh, هي الديفيوز اكزونال انجري كدفرنشيال اذا ما عندنا هيستوري مال تروما نخلي الهيموراجيك ميتاستاسيس يعني كدفرنشيال اذا ما عندنا هيستوري مال تروما اي كهيموراجيك ميتاستاسيس نعم عمي اوكي uh... دكتورة تبيني الكونشيوس اسمات البيشنت؟ The patient was comatose and unfortunately died. امم يعني هو mostly diffuse exon injury. بالضبط. نعم يعني اذا كان هو unconscious دكتورة فرقان بغض النظر هذا البيشنت ما شو يسوي له هو هذا؟ متوقعين؟ بعد هو قصدك عمي كتريتمنت؟ كتريتمنت يعني هو انكونشيوس وشخصنا احنا ديفيوز اكزونال عند برين ستيم عند برونتو بارايتال عند مثل ما قالت كوربس كلوزر يعني في الديفيوز شو يسوي له؟ هو عم يعني اكيد يعني هو بور بجنوسز ايه؟ يعني هو يعني بس مو كل شيء ما يسوي له لا اكيد يعني Now we have a 27 years old male that has sustained this severe acceleration rotational injury. Uh, now they did first CT scan for him. And in the CT scan, we see multiple hyperdense foci distributed throughout the brain, particularly in the frontal parietal region. And also we have subtle finding in the right basal ganglia here, and also subtle finding in the posterior uh, part of the corpus callosum. And we have mild brain, generalized brain edema. We have uh, left-sided frontal parietal subgallial hematoma noted also here. Uh, in addition uh, to other findings, we see uh, the upper level of the NG tube and endotracheal tube uh, inside the patient. And uh, we did uh, the, co the complementary MRI for the patient. Uh, we see the uh, multiple, again, hyper-intense foci in the T2 and flare. Uh, and also we see some areas of hyper-intensity in the T1. Uh, the areas are mostly in gray-white matter interface, particularly frontal and temporal lobe. And also we have uh, area as we saw it in the uh, CT in the basal ganglia on the right side. And also we see uh, in the splenium of the corpus callosum as well. And also in the uh, small focus in the pons. And these foci, they show all of them, they show the uh, blooming, or we can say most of them, they show blooming uh, in the SUI or susceptibility weighted imaging that indicate that there is hemorrhage. And in addition, also there is a, a market restricted diffusion uh, in the um, DUI and in the ADC map. In addition, uh, finding in the uh, additional finding in the uh, MRI is that we have also bilateral uh, mastoid filling. Uh, this is just an additional finding, maybe has no relation with the, uh, the this finding. So the overall picture gives us the uh, diagnosis of diffuse axonal injury stage three, since the corpus callosum and the midbrain, or we can say in this patient, pons has been involved. So this is a great or stage three diffuse axonal injury. Okay, shall we go to the talk? Okay, six. Stop yeah. this share. Uh, it appears on the screen? No, no, stop your share, Hade, the case, and... Victoria okay. Tabin, stop no. this share. Uh, oh, sure. Share screen, stop, Hade. ويروحي على ذاك التوك اوكي هسه اوكي 
Okay. Uh, now we will talk about a uh, brief uh, talk about the diffuse axonal injury and its main pathological and radiological views and uh, the main gradient type. Uh, first of all, the definition of diffuse axonal injury is that is a traumatic or sometimes called a traumatic axonal injury is a severe form of traumatic brain injury due to shearing forces. Uh, so high impact trauma with acceleration and deceleration forces is the main state or main mechanism of the injury that cause a stretching and also causing a, a deformation of the brain tissues. Um, the slide doesn't go. ارجع اطلعي منه وارجعي مرة عليه ثانية اوكي شوي شو هسه شو هسه تنقلب اي اوكي 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 سو ذيس از ذا مين mechanism of the injury when we have a force, a severe force to the part of the brain and the other part will touches the uh, inside the skull, the, uh, also the bone and will cause acceleration and deceleration forces. And by this way, the axons will be uh, very damaged and some of them they will break and result in this injury. Uh, start. I have a problem. It doesn't go the slide share. Shall I go without slide uh, sharing? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the epidemiology of the diffuse axonal injury so the patient at the risk of diffuse axonal injury is the same cohort who suffered traumatic brain injury, but the young man generally they are overestimated or overrepresented in these cases. The main clinical presentation in diffuse axonal injury is that the patient will present with the loss of consciousness at the time of the accident. They are comatose when they come to the hospital. Uh, or sometimes they will have a post-traumatic coma may last a considerable time and is often attributed to coexistence more visible injuries. For example, they may have associated cerebral contusion. The pathology behind the diffuse axonal injuries that we say we have the damage to the axon. So there will be shearing due to change in the velocity that has predilection for axon in the gray and white matter junction. So in the majority of cases, these forces damage cells and result in edema and complete tearing of the axons in only seen in severe cases like a grade three or stage two or three. Neurons may undergo degeneration in a week or a month after trauma. The main radiographic feature of the diffuse axonal injury is that it's characterized by multiple focal lesions with characteristic distribution, typically located at gray white matter junction, in the corpus callosum, and in more severe cases in the brainstem, as we showed in our case. The CT uh, scan that done for the patient in the first come to the hospital has very low sensitivity for detecting diffuse axonal injury. So the finding may be just a normal CT. Uh, so maybe hemorrhagic hyperdense lesion from few millimeters to few centimeter, or they may present it with non-hemorrhagic hypodense lesion with surrounding edema, or they may have a significant cerebral edema. So all these possibilities are uh, uh, we should face it or we may face it in the hospital when we see a patient with diffuse axonal injury. So here we see a CT scan, a uh, non-contrast CT scan of the brain of a patient. We see multiple hyperdense lesion in the right front, uh, gray white matter junction. Also in the basal ganglia, as noted, uh, may represent a hemorrhagic foci or in case of diffuse axonal injury. Another case will we'll show the uh, marked diffuse brain edema in the CT scan. Also, we see a hyperdense focus in the right frontal region with a peri-lesional uh, edema uh, in the case of diffuse axonal injury here. While MRI is a modality of choice, 
MRI specially susceptibility weighted imaging or gradient sequence is highly sensitive for detecting hemorrhagic lesions in a gray white matter interface, corpus callosum, or brainstem. While non hemorrhagic lesion will appear T2 flare high signal intensity. Uh, on MRI, over the first few days post injury, the degree of surrounding edema will typically increase, although by three months, flare changes will be largely resolved. In contrast, susceptibility-weighted changes usually take longer to resolve with a substantial resolution by 12-month plus injury. And this makes sense since the edema uh, take less time to resolve compared to the blood. Later, there will be a blood volume reduction. The staging is very important regarding diffuse axonal injury since it will affect the future uh, life of the patient. So the stage one is the lower we have gray white matter junction is the most common site is parasagittal region of frontal lobe, periventricular temporal lobes, while less common site we see it in parietal and occipital lobes, internal and external capsule and cerebellum. Here we see a uh, uh, high intensity focus here in a flare of this uh, MRI of the brain uh, in the gray white matter, white matter junction of the frontal lobe, of the right frontal lobe. This is stage one. Stage two is the corpus callosum is involved in addition to the white great white matter junction, mostly involve the posterior body and splenium of the corpus callosum, as we saw it in our case, a less common site an anterior body and rostrum, usually unilateral and eccentric, but maybe bilateral and symmetric. This is the example. Uh, here we have MRI uh, of the brain, T1, flare, and diffusion and T2 star or SUI. Uh, we see a focus of the high signal intensity in a flare, and also that show the susceptibility uh, blooming on the uh, susceptibility imaging, and also show some restricted diffusion involving the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum here. The stage three involve the brainstem, almost in, uh, invariably in addition to other areas involving lower white, lower white matter and corpus callosum. Most common sites are dorsal lateral midbrain, upper pons, and superior cerebellar peduncles. This is an example of part of the brain that appeared uh, on susceptibility weighted imaging that show a blooming uh, in the uh, middle cerebellar peduncle and also part of the pons has been involved here. So involved uh, this in case of stage three diffuse axonal injury. So this is summarizing the grade, grade one, two, three. In grade one, we say it involved only the gray white matter junction. Grade two, in addition to this, will involve the part of the corpus callosum, which we said mostly involving the posterior aspect, and grade three involving the midbrain. So in addition to grade one and two. The MR spectroscopy has uh, some of benefit in identifying the patient with grade one injury, which may be inapparent on other sequences, which typically demonstrate an elevation of a choline peak and reduction in an acetyl acetate, in, in indicating the more certain uh, cell turnover and cell death. Uh, that's why the choline peak will be elevated and NNA will be uh, low. The treatment, uh, unfortunately, there is much can be done for the patient uh, in case of the diffuse axonal injury other than supportive care uh, that we try to minimize secondary damage that caused by cerebral edema, hypoxia, and seizure. Depending on the severity and distribution of the injury, patient can vary from minimally affected to be in a persistent vegetative state. The amount of axonal injury in a brainstem is predictive of the long-term vegetative state, whereas the supratentorial injury can result in focal neurological or neuropsychiatric deficit. So the further the stage or the more the grade or stage of the diffuse axonal injury, the more likely that the patient will go to the long-term vegetative state. The main differential diagnosis in case of diffuse axonal injury is cortical or cerebral contusion. Typically, here, the cortical contusion is located superficially, involving the cortex, which is rather at a gray-white matter junction, and are usually associated with variable amount of extra axial blood, usually subarachnoid and subdural blood. 
this is an example of cerebral contusion. Here we see that the abnormality is mostly in cortical and subcortical region other than the buried white matter junction, although in this picture we don't see actual subarachnoid or subdural hemorrhage, but may be seen in other sections. The other differential is amyloid angiopathy, which is usually distributes blooming, multiple blooming foci distributed throughout the brain, but mostly a cortical and subcortical region. And also can also be seen in superficial cerebellum and cerebellar cortex or veins. Hypertensive encephalopathy is mostly seen in the central part of the brain, mostly involving the basal ganglia, pons, and cerebellum with area of the uh, blooming that's shown in this picture uh, in the susceptibility weighted image. This is an example of hypertensive encephalopathy. We also have a type 4 cavernoma that usually uh, is one of the differ uh, differential diagnoses of diffuse axonal injury. Type 4 cavernoma is usually a rare type uh, that's poorly seen in T1 and T2, but just show a punctate hypointense foci in the susceptibility weighted imaging. It's just a uh, appearance of type 4 cavernoma. And these are my references. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. Tabi. Thank you. Uh,